From the National Weather Service in Raleigh, it's Nick Petro with your, um, let's see, it's Friday, 9 o'clock, the 21st of January. It's a winter storm update. And let's jump right into the radar. This is live radar here. And you can see all the precip is mainly along or just off the coast. So uh, don't let that fool you, though. Um, this is, we were predicting that there would be a lull in the weather this morning. And sure enough, that lull is underway. But there's more weather to come our way later today. Of course, this briefing is as of 9 o'clock uh, this morning, the 21st of, of January, this Friday. And um, no real changes to the watches and warnings. Um, and really, the, the hazards still remain snow, sleet, freezing rain, hazardous travel, and black ice. Okay, so let me get into the simulations. Okay, because this... Uh, kind of tells the story of the evolution of things. And as I normally show, uh, and I'm just setting it up now, so uh, disregard what I've just showed in the last few moments, because um, uh, setting that up. All right, so this is the high-res rapid refresh model. It's a, it's a great model for, you know, the next 12 hours, 18 hours in the future. It's, it's a pretty advanced model. It's my kind of go-to for the for day one period. All right, so... Um, this is current time and, you know, the simulation matches pretty much what's happening along and off the coast. Okay. So I'm going to step through this and I'll give you the time conversion as we go through this, but, uh, this would be, uh, basically right now, 10 AM, 11 AM noon, noon today, 1 PM, 2 PM, 3 PM. 4 p.m. So up until 4 p.m. Well, let me back up. Let me go. Let me go back to 2 p.m. All right. So 2 p.m. Up until 2 p.m. There's nothing in Central North Carolina. Even our friends down in um, Anson, Richmond, and Scotland County. I think you're clear through 2 p.m. But once we get to 3 p.m., then our southern counties, the three that I just mentioned, there could be some uh, freezing rain, uh, maybe some sleet mixing in. That's what that peach shade or pink shade, whatever. It's hard to tell exactly what color that is. I think it's a peach shade. Um, that is uh, representative of freezing rain. Okay, so again, this time frame right here, that's 3 p.m., 4 p.m., 5 p.m. And look how quickly it blossoms between 4 and 5 p.m. Okay, there's, a, there's an upper level feature and a wave of low pressure that will be basically lifting up from the southwest and basically forcing this weather, okay? And let me back up one more time. So this is 4 p.m. And I will point out, as usual, um, and, and I apologize for the uh, emails there. Um, uh, thank you for the heads up about that, uh, Dalton. Um, so uh, uh, normally I close that before I do my briefings, but uh, thanks for that, Dalton. Um, so so um, it, the blue is um, snow. And hang on here one second here while I clear this all out. All right. So the blue is snow. This uh, sort of um, oh, orange color is sleet, and the red is freezing rain. All right. So that's 4 p.m. 5 p.m., as I pointed out, look how it blossoms. Uh, the blue is snow. Uh, this is 6 p.m., 7 p.m., 8 p.m., 9 p.m. 10 p.m. And by the way, this darker, this purple would, would represent, you know, a little bit more in the way of intense snowfall. So from Scotland, Richmond County, up through Fayetteville, up through Sanford, up through Lillington, up through Clayton, up through uh, Nightdale, and up toward Nashville, uh, perhaps a band of, of somewhat heavier snow. This would be um, 10 p.m. tonight. 11 p.m., 12 p.m., midnight tonight, uh, 1 a.m., 2 a.m., 3 a.m., and then it basically just gets out of here, right? And that's pretty much what we've been forecasting for the last couple of days, that the, the main event, so to speak, would be this evening into the early overnight hours. Okay, now the challenge has always been what happens back in the triad in points west. And clearly all the models have generally had a sharp cutoff right before the snow gets to the triad, okay? So um, sharp cutoffs are always difficult 
to predict. So that's why we've been advertising the so-called, you've probably seen this in our briefings, the so-called zone of uncertainty. So this area right here that I'm kind of clicking, you know, this is what I would consider the zone of uncertainty. Where this line lines up, the back edge, and how much actually occurs on either side of this line. Okay, you know, clearly it would be, you know, if, if, if snow accumulates west of this line, obviously it'd be very light, if anything, maybe, you know, obviously less than an inch. But what happens just east of this line should be pretty light, you know, maybe an inch or so, and then maybe a little bit more the further you go east. Okay, so that zone of uncertainty um, basically remains. Um, let me just walk you through a couple. I'm going to put the model right here at 10 p.m. And I'm going to compare it to some other models. So here is the, the NAM model for that same time frame. Um, let me back up here and show Breezy this evening. This is the same time frame, different model than the one I just showed, but same time frame. And here you go, the back edge, same place. Okay. Um, let me go back to my arrow. Uh, this is the GFS model. Same time, the GFS actually uh, has snow getting back to Greensboro and, and, and heck, almost to 77. So this would be a little bit more aggressive on the western edge, okay? Uh, so that's the GFS model. And, and, and while we're at it, let's just see what it does prior to that. Yeah, so, you know, it, it looks like it's only a very brief time that the GFS model has snow back Toward the triad maybe you know three hours perhaps um what other models do we have some high res models um so i'm looking for 3z comparison same thing um a little bit further a little bit more aggressive in that uh, triad zone uh, if i go back in time and move forward you can see though how it quickly uh it's very brief in the triad and then it explodes uh over the us1 corridor to the i-95 corridor at 4z and then it puts down some snow. The I-95 corridor is set to get some snow out of this. Uh, I will tell you this. Um, if you're long and east of I-95, you're set for some several inches of snow, okay? Because all the models are in that agreement. Let me show a different model just for comparison. This model, on the other hand, is a little bit further east, okay? And has and doesn't have much snow west of that line that I drew. So if you, if you, if you kind of take all these models and you kind of do like a kind of in your head a little bit of a a little bit of a of of of, of an averaging, if you will. I'm going to go back to the high res rapid refresh again. That's one of my favorites on day one, and I'm going to go to sort of the peak of the event. Bear with me here for just a second while I get this lined up. Four Z, we'll say. I think it's fairly safe bet that if you most of the models agree that if you're west of this line I just drew on the screen, from Greensboro to Lexington westward, you're going to get the least amount of snow. Yeah, it might snow for, you know, two, three hours. It might put down, in, you know, a coating, maybe a half inch. But I think that zone is going to have the least amount of snow. Where's the most amount of snow going to be? I would say from this line I'm drawing right now, from Roanoke Rapids down toward Nashville to Clayton uh, to Lillington. Uh, maybe just maybe just a little bit west of there. Um, it could extend back to, to, to the eastern suburbs of Raleigh. But basically, the I-95 corridor to this line here is set to get some pretty solid snow rates um, later this uh, this evening. Probably most people will be sleeping by the time this is all falling, right? So a lot of folks will just wake up tomorrow morning and see all the snow on the ground. Okay? And it's this area in between, which is what I consider the zone of uncertainty. OK, and, and that's why we put that on our PowerPoint slides. Again, this area right here is what I would consider the zone of uncertainty. You know, it, it could be, you know, there could be several inches of snow and then it's just quick, sharp drop off. It could be more gradual. It's hard to say at this point. But I think what we can tell you is that the, the heaviest snow will be generally east of US-1, OK, probably straddled along the I-95 corridor. OK, in points east. And obviously, the I, I, I do want to um, I don't want to be remiss if I didn't mention that there could be some 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 freezing rain or sleet getting in to our um, uh, southern Sampson County, because uh, 
Weather Service Raleigh covers Sampson County. I don't want to forget about our friends in Sampson County. Um, it looks like there's going to be uh, the best chance for sleet and freezing rain to accumulate uh, is going to be in Sampson County as it relates to Central North Carolina and our coverage area. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> so anyway, if you're in Forsyth County, you're probably not going to see a whole lot. This is not going to be a big deal for you. Okay. But but uh, but the zone of uncertainty is from Greensboro, uh, Lexington, eastward to about I uh, to about US one. All right. All right, so that's a, that's a look at the simulations. By uh, by tomorrow morning, by this time tomorrow, obviously it's all over with, okay? And the sun will be out. Uh, temperatures are going to hold in the, uh, basically in the lower 30s. They may Temperatures may not even get above freezing tomorrow, but it's going to be uh, maybe a degree or two above to maybe right around freezing, uh, particularly coldest where the greatest snowpack is, okay? So, uh, so anyway, um, I'm not going to take you through all this again because we just went through this. But again, uh, zone of uncertainty is in that zone from Greensboro to Lexington East to US one. And again, just to just to, uh, to reiterate, overnight tonight it'll be winding down and exiting. Okay, so I, I want folks to to again, I can't emphasize this enough that you know, don't be fooled by the break in the weather now. Okay, um, things are going to get going this afternoon. Uh, maybe as early as 2 p.m. for a little bit of freezing rain and sleet across the South Carolina border. Uh, so Anson, Scotland, Richmond counties, you might see a little sleet freezing rain before it changes to snow. And then the snow expands northward so that by late afternoon, uh, things will be getting underway. And then this evening and tonight, deteriorating road conditions. Um, and then as we head through Saturday and Saturday night, obviously it'll be dry, but there's going to be lingering snow and ice. Um, obviously, when we get into that freeze, uh, daytime thaw, nighttime freeze cycle, uh, that'll give us a chance for some black ice each morning, Sunday morning, Monday morning, maybe even into Tuesday morning across uh, areas east and northeast of uh, I-95. So uh, so that's uh, that's how we expect this timeline uh, to uh, break out there and, 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 and evolve. Uh, here's our event total snowfall. So again, uh, you know, along and east of I-95, um, the counties that run the I-95 run through and points east uh, will have the uh, highest snow amount. Uh, between I-95 and US-1, it gets a little tricky, maybe two to three inches. And then uh, west of US-1, that's where the zone of uncertainty is. Okay, the ice should be, uh, the ice accumulation should be confined uh, to a line from Goldsboro to Fayetteville southward, particularly south of Clinton. So look for some isolated down trees and power outages there. And uh, you know, the, uh, I'll, I'll be you know providing updates as we uh, as we head through uh, the day today. I will be do another full webinar at four thirty, so um, you know we'll be underway by then, and uh, at least you know this, the 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 second round will be underway by then. And um, if if anything pops up in terms of you know it comes in earlier, let's say you know let's say you know we're, we're, our timing's off and things start an hour or two earlier. Obviously, I'll, I'll send out updated slides uh, and, and I'll send out information by email, um, you know, if, if things don't follow the timeline that I just laid out. OK, so that's the way things are shaping up. Again, I'll be sending these slides out here briefly uh, after we disconnect another full briefing at um, 430 and I'll supplement those briefings uh, as needed throughout the course of the day.